Welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. It is good to be in worship with each and every one of you. On this Palm Sunday, we hear the cries of the crowd that say, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. It is a week that starts this, this day with those shouts. And then we process with Jesus during Holy Week. A couple of announcements as we gather as a community for Holy Week coming up. On Thursday, April 1st, we will have an online Monday Thursday service that will be available Thursday afternoon. If you would like to receive the Sacrament of Holy Communion, you may come for drive through communion from 4 to 6.30 for communion and prayer and blessing. Good Friday. We will have an online worship service available um, Friday afternoon. I um, invite you to tune in to that Good Friday service as four of our members um, will reflect on the seven last words of Christ uh, from the cross. And then we have Silent Saturday, and then we rejoice on Easter Sunday morning. We will have two services, one at 7 a.m., about 20 minutes north um, from church, at the Apache um, Trailhead. It's going to be a wonderful opportunity uh, to gather um, in the light of a new day and a new dawn of creation and celebrate um, the Easter story and the Easter message. And then we'll have an Easter service in our parking lot at 9.30. My dear friends, may this holy week that begins this weekend with Palm Sunday that leads us into this week May this week be a blessing and a meaningful week to each and every one of you. Come, it is time to worship. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. A reading of Palm Sunday Gospel. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find Tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. 
Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through your Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined in his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Please join us for the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God so highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hosanna! The Gospel of our Lord. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the festival, or they, there may be a riot among the people. Now while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum, and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hosanna. Grace and peace to you from our risen and living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, on this most holiest of Sundays, this Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, where we continue to draw near to you and you draw near to us, Lord, be with us this, this day as we continue our journey with you. And now, Lord God, may the words in my mouth and meditation of our hearts be holy and acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of my favorite jobs that I had for a couple of summers was working at the Minnesota State Fair in the Minnesota Turkey Growers Association booth. It was great. The hours were long, but it was so much fun. The booth was all about turkey. We had turkey burgers, turkey hot dogs, turkey drumsticks, turkey sandwiches, and so much more. It was hard work, but fun. What made it so fun is where this booth was located at the Minnesota State Fair. 
It was located in the perfect spot to give us an opportunity to people watch at the fair. The booth was located down on, on a main street and down by all the animal barns. And it was prime, prime watching and observing people as they were walking around the fair. During our down times when we didn't have a line that we were serving our customers, I would find myself observing the crowd. And as I, as I observed the crowd, I wondered what their story was, what they had seen at the fair, what part of Minnesota did they come from? And many other questions popped into my head. I also asked the question, what kind of journey were they on this day at the fair? I have a feeling that many of us find ourselves doing that quite often, maybe while you're waiting in line, or when a car pulls up next to you at the stoplight, you may ask yourself the question, I wonder where they're going, or how their day is going. And many of us probably pause when we see an ambulance, a fire truck, or a police car with their lights on. We pause and say a prayer for all those that are involved in the situation that those cars are going to. I think about the journeys that we are all on and the ones that we have been on. I think about how our journeys intersect with each other. It's easy to say that some of our journeys we pack for and we get excited and we get ready for. And there are other journeys of this life that we go on that we didn't pack for, we didn't sign up for, we didn't want to go on, but we go on. We have been on a journey these 40 days of Lent. The season of Lent is a time of repentance and renewal, a journey of connecting with God in a more deep and meaningful way, connecting with God who is merciful, gracious, and slow to anger. It is a connecting during these 40 days that for many of us would say kind of repositions us, reorientates us, redirects us. It is this connecting that again we are reminded that the cross is central. A cross is a place where we completely see the heart of God, we completely see God's grace and forgiveness. And it is at the cross. We see God's final saving act, our salvation, and in that hope that is given to us and to the world, that hope that surrounds us and sustains us as we live all those journeys, as we die and forevermore. It is in this connecting of those 40 days that we reflect on the sacrifice that Jesus makes for us on the cross. As we have been on that journey, Jesus has also been on a journey. Jesus' journey has been to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, that city that we all know, the hub of religious life and political life. A city that is brimming, brimming with people coming to remember and celebrate the Passover meal. A city, a city that held the hope that held the hope of the people, that a new king would come, the anointed one, the Messiah, the one that would save and free the people and overthrow the Roman rule. It was a city that also held the temple, the place where God dwelt, a place that you wanted to go to. You wanted to make that pilgrimage. You wanted to go, especially during the Passover, as you remembered and celebrated God's faithfulness and deliverance. A city, as we enter into this Palm Sunday, this Passion Sunday, as we heard our readings from our Gospels, a city where two parades, two parades come into the city that day. One group, one on one side of the city, came into the city was Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, and his cavalry, his stallion, and all of his people, we can assume that Pilate probably brought some extra folks with him this time of year because Jerusalem was going to be full of people and also because of Jesus. He had been hearing a lot about Jesus. So he brought all that he could so he could keep the peace during this time. Coming in through another gate 
was Jesus on a donkey, coming in with his followers. And as they walked, some threw their cloaks on the road and spread their leafy palms that they had cut from the field. They made a royal path, a royal highway for Jesus. And in the midst of this, you heard this crowd shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! Save us! As they waved their palm branches, this entrance of Jesus on his donkey almost could have gone unseen, yet it was an entrance that had everyone talking and thinking, including Pilate. Can you almost imagine the chatter and the buzz that was happening in and around the city? And what a confusing time it had to have been for all those that were in the city. And during that confusing time, the question that was in front of everyone was, who is this one? Who is he? Who is the one that we're going to follow? Who or what are we going to follow? The one that came in on a stallion or the one that came in on a donkey? The one, this one, who hailed peasants, leopards, cripples, outcasts, and now cry, save us. The one that they call the Messiah. The one who showed compassion, love, and healing to all. The one who went against religious and political authorities and his teachings and his action. Who is this one whose devoted followers would soon turn from him? His disciples would abandon him. A friend would deny knowing him. And the crowds in a few days would yell, crucify him. Who is this one who would be tried by both religious and political leaders and seen as a threat an enemy for what Jesus, this one, did. Who is this one that turns everything upside down? Who is this one, the one today that we hear? The crowd shout, and we shout, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, save us. As the crowds entered Jerusalem with Jesus, they did shout, Hosanna, save us. Those cries were heartfelt, hopefelt, and they were filled with a hope of what Jesus was going to do for them, that Jesus would save them from their situation. As we wave our palms on this Palm Sunday, we also cry, Hosanna, save us. As you wave your palm this day, what cries do you bring? As we wave our palms and shout Hosanna, do we dare to imagine? Do we dare to hope? Do we dare to believe that beyond all hope, that the one that has come into Jerusalem, that God does and will save us? We cry out, God, save us from anger, from envy, from control. Save us from difficulties in relationships in our workplace, from boredom. And right now, I think we cry as a country, as a nation. We cry, save us from this continued cycle of endless violence. And save us. Save us from our fears. We cry out individually and collectively. Save us. Save me. God, save us. My friends, this is where we are on this Palm Sunday. We are the crowd that cries out, Hosanna, save me. We are in this city that is shaking and swirling with so many questions. As we enter this Holy Week, we bring our cries to this journey, into this week. Yet, we know, just as we cry, save me, those cries quickly, quickly turn to crucify him, 
crucify him. Those cries of crucify him turn. The crowd turns when Jesus didn't send the Romans fleeing from Jerusalem. That was the hope. And the shouts of crucify him come. Our shouts of crucify him come at those different difficult times during our journeys. They come when Jesus seems distant. And maybe we even feel doesn't hear our cry of Hosanna. Save us, save me. We don't understand. And sometimes we have more questions and answers, more tears than joy, than peace. Yet on this Palm Sunday, some would also say Passion Sunday, we cling on to and hold on to the shouts of Hosanna. Save me. We cling to the one who comes into town riding on a donkey. The one we confess that comes into town in order, in order to make it possible for God to love us, but rather to demonstrate that God already loves us, that God already does save us. And it is God's love which covers us in hope and in life. In the midst of those cries of why, cries of save me, cries of the messiness of life. This is Jesus, the one who is our Messiah, our Lord, the one who comes into town, the one who comes into town on a donkey, the one who is today, tomorrow, and forever our source of hope, healing, and saving. This week, this is our journey. This is our journey. We journey to the cross. We journey with Christ to the cross. Jesus goes to the cross for us. Jesus is the one that turns our palms into crosses. The crosses were the whys, the questions, and the mess is met with love and compassion, life, peace, and hope. A blessed Palm Sunday to each of you, and a blessed Holy Week to you. Amen.
Hosanna! Trusting in Christ's Passover from death to new life, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God, most holy and humble, plant in your Christ's spirit of humanity. Remove any barriers preventing us from seeing Jesus' saving work on the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You reveal your will for all creation through stones, seas, mountains, and meadows. In the splendor of what you have made, show us your care for everything, both great and small. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our hearts and minds to receive the words that you speak. Give us words to encourage the weary and to sustain one another in word and deed. We continue to pray for those that we name in our hearts and those on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, every act of violence in our world, in our communities, between myself and others, destroys a part of your creation. We pray for communities of Atlanta and Boulder. Send your arms of comfort and peace. Be present in those communities. May each one of us play a part in breaking the cycle of violence by realizing that peace begins with each one of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather your saints into a new convent that Christ has established for all creation. When we fall into sin, continually renew us until Christ dwells with us again in fullness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Attend to the needs of the whole world with your saving grace and lead us into new life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join together in the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive this sending. God who fills creation with abundance. Christ who spreads his arms of forgiveness. And the Holy Spirit who draws ever near to us. Bless you to live everlasting. Amen. Ah. Uh -huh.